So with this, we directly begin with our next segment, the panel discussion. This panel discussion will revolve around the theme, decoding the expectations from law educators. And we have great faculties with us from different law schools. First of all, we have our first panelist, Professor A.V. Narasimha Rao, the Director of Institute of Chartered Chartered Financial Analyst of India, Hyderabad. Professor Rao has significantly contributed to the field, authoring over 45 research articles and guiding PhD and LLM students. We welcome you, sir, on behalf of Harvey University. <laughs> Our next panelist, Dr. Professor C.S. Patel, is the Research Director of Karnataka Institute of Law and Parliamentary Reforms. Professor is currently serving as the research head at the conductor V. Vijay Kumar, former Vice Chancellor of National Law Institute University, Bhopal. He is a seasoned professional in an academia with experience of over 40 years. As LLM students, we are privileged to have him learning from Professor. We welcome Professor as well. In research of School of Law, RV University. Over to you. I'm delighted to be moderating this session on decoding the expectations of law educators. It's a privilege to be part of this distinguished panel, which includes Professor A.V. Narsimha Rao, Professor C.S. Patil, and, Prof and Dr. Vijay Kumar. Uh, Dr. Subramanya, who was supposed to be part of the panel, could not join us today because of health reasons. We are very honored to have all of you here, and welcome. The format of the session is as follows. We have an hour and 15 minutes. The first one hour will be a Q&A with the panelists. I will pose a few questions and invite each panelist to respond. In the last 15 minutes, I will open up the floor to questions from the audience. I have shortlisted six questions to ask the panelists. These questions have been framed on the basis of feedback received from law teachers. They highlight they highlight common changes that law educators face. The role of a teacher in a university or college today is multifaceted. Faculty are expected to balance teaching, research, and administrative duties. Esteemed panelists, your insights as experienced professionals can greatly assist in addressing key aspects of being a law educator today. How do law teachers balance the several expectations of them and understand their ethical responsibilities? Since we have six questions, I would like to devote 10 minutes to each question. Uh, the first question is as follows. Law teachers, when they join the profession afresh, often rely on osmosis and learning on the job to gain various important skills. However, this takes time. How can this be addressed? Should there be a training program for law teachers? If yes, then what are the must-haves of such a program? As I said, these questions have been uh, uh, Ms. Priyanka helped me with gathering the questions, and they've actually emerged from feedback that law teachers have given. Uh, may I invite Professor Narsimha Rao to respond, please? Thank you, Lakshmiji. Thank you, Mr. Manupatra, for organizing this particular program, more particularly to Mr. Kapoor, Chandrasekhar, Priya, um, Priyanka, and Priyanka Patil. Second, I'll thank every one of you, because they are sitting before us, patiently, with a small anxiety to hear. OK, whether you hear or not, that is the second issue. It shows that you are here to hear us. If you go to the classroom and see the students, what is the status today? How many students are ready to hear in the classroom very seriously? After five minutes or seven minutes maximum, they will be totally diverting and they'll be having all the fun they wanted to have with this gadgets, they have, whatever they have. Maybe cell phone, maybe other things, they'll be making it. OK, if you ask them to sit f uh, very forcefully, they'll be starting questioning and sleeping in the class. Under these circumstances, if you are the teacher for the first time entering into the classroom, what are the problems you are facing? Number one, you do not know nature of that particular student classroom combination. Second, you'll be not knowing about the subject also thoroughly because you'll be coming prepared to that class along with your PPT. PPT is there handing to us. Every time we'll be put a, a, a PPT. And later on, you try to explain the particular PPT, but by the time, every student will be knowing about the subject. Do you think that students are not knowing the subject? What are, what are you teaching? 
they know much better than this faculty which are uh, who are entering to that who is taking the class you have good number of resources for the learning process when you have the good number of learning processes or uh, uh, sources then they will be having the multiple positions multiple area of knowledge where is the student who come with a preparation one to one or two or three books he will be having limited knowledge under the circumstances if you say something if you are not able to answer the question placed by that particular student automatically they will be seeing you differently under these circumstances question is whether the training is required yes training is required but how many colleges are providing this training to the students teachers who are entering that particular path is there any model in any other universities in last course more particularly which is called a mentoring or a training program training the student teachers no your llm is not having the that particular part your undergraduate course you will use with only passing writing the examinations internal assessment all those things that part will be going on second the information whatever is a student whatever collected you are keeping aside you are not able to guess or plan which is required so under these circumstances a training is must for a teacher under you know the bar council of india has started one academy in in odisha kids and i do not know how many batches have gone there or how many uh, teachers have been trained the purpose is very much there is a requirement on it what kind of training is they require what kind of training the teacher requires number one whenever you are entering into the class try to estimate the iq level of that particular class there will be a lot of variations in the iq levels of the students maybe top student maybe dull student mediocre some students will come because there is no other go they had to come they are sitting some students will be forced to sit in the class by their parents without interest they are coming up so different kinds of the psychology of students you, you can observe depending upon that approach you have to mold yourself you have to come and convince and satisfy all the levels of the students it is not so easy then you have to create an interest in the students that whatever they know that is a little and there is a lot of thing to do you can say your information is there i see in the morning somebody is selling how to get and where to get and how to process that particular information this is most important if you are able to impress on the student that information they have only raw material it has to be used only after proper analysis of how to do the analysis you are the person you have to mentor them you have to teach them what is required for that particular class and that particular part you had you had to identify if the teacher is not able to assess the requirement of the class because class will be given by somebody in academics he will come with a time table okay today i have the time table they are kind enough they will prepare if not they will come and start their own history there are some teachers with a due respect to the old people and also the veterans they have been teaching the same subject for the years they feel that there is no requirement of preparation for the class it is not like that when they start that particular part the student the senior batch will be communicating with the junior batch this sir will tell this is the sequence these are the words they use that communication will pass on to the student and the student will be waiting for those things as all so you have to prepare for every class depending upon your the composition of the class number 1 the subject you are teaching what the what is expected of that particular class what is the aim of that particular co course we have the course outcomes and learning outcomes are there we do not, i do not know more particularly how many of we know what are the learning objectives of that particular course how many of us assessed after the course is over where the purpose of that particular is done it i think very few very few might be knowing it so you prepare yourself with reference to that particular part prepare yourself that particular part it may be formal training may not be possible at all level it may be learnt from your senior senior teachers sit in the senior teachers classes how he is handling it if not the purpose you know very well you have to convince the students you keep you have to keep the students sitting for 45 to 1 hour there is a big task again so how you can impress upon the st student and keep all the people tight that is the most part it will it will be coming from your experience as a fresher if you come there and if you are fresher you are talking there you have to tell that subject which is not known to them 
So you take exams much more. Synthesization and validity of the information whatever the student is having is much more needed. If you are not validating the information whatever he is having it, and if you are not analyzing the part of it, if you are not informing how the process of analysis takes place, where that particular student has to absorb, to what extent he has to absorb, if this information is not impressed upon that, automatically he will be sleeping in the class. That will be demotivate you. And when you are teaching, if somebody is sleeping, somebody is talking, and somebody may disturbing you, it is a totally very hard to understand, hard to digest. So a teacher has to go to the class. If there is a training, fine. If you are not having the train, you yourself prepare with anticipation. You, teacher, was there in that particular position. As a student, what was your feeling? What you are thinking of the teacher? What you are expecting out of the teacher? Same routine matter that has been give, given for years together or something new? And application of the law knowledge to the new area is much more needed for that. So there is a lot of hard work required. As a teacher, you are the mentor, you are the facilitator, you are the analyzer, you are the person who are giving the part. If there is any some missing upon your part, if you are not fully ful fulfilling your duties properly, you are making a loss to a student uh, who, uh, who is again going to be a teacher or some kind of profession. Entire profession, entire teachers, entire society is based upon that. I say the entire teacher is a social engineer you have to make it, you have to become. You have to make change, you have to bring change, changes, you have to work together and hard together. Even we know very well that there is no training programs in our path. That's why we, we have some faculty development programs. Those faculty development programs, again, are limited. One, two, three, four areas only that will be limited. Not all. So faculty development program, more than the subject matter, the organizer should concentrate how to handle the students, how to impress upon them, how to catch all them. If you are able to put all the people intact, automatically they are learning. Learning is not a problem at all. They are having a lot of IQ. Nowadays, uh, people are having a lot of IQs. They do have a lot of analyzing skills. This 21st century skill sets are there with them. You have to put them properly and organize them. That is only your burden. Those 60 classes or 48 classes, whatever that is given for the subject, may or may not sufficient to you. You have to plan according to your objectives, learning objectives, then analyze at every stage what kind of takeaway you have given to them and what, what kind of things as you have made it. If you are able to do that, this kind of thing, as a teacher, to some extent, you are coming to learn. No. Thank you. Um, thank you, Professor Narsimra. Yeah, after sumptuous food, you know, I don't want to sleep. <coughs> uh, Mr. Deepak uh, and Priyanka Squire from Manupatra. <laughs> My friend and colleague, uh, Professor Murthy, the Vice Chancellor, and our uh, Lieutenant, uh, Dr. Arpita. My fellow panelists and uh, my dear colleagues, good afternoon to everyone present here. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, question, Radha. And uh, possibly I'll take the time given to Professor Patil also to dwell on this <laughs> particular issue. <laughs> right. Uh, please carefully follow me. Sometimes out of over-enthusiasm, we skip certain things. And sometimes we don't even bother to look at uh, these developments. And therefore, I would like to start with, uh, begin my presentation with uh, two major developments that have posed challenge to the young law teachers, generally young teachers, and more specifically, because we are going to talk about law teachers, the young law teachers uh, in the recent past. One is a decade-old problem. The UGC all of a sudden gave birth to a new baby called one-year LLM. And in fact, I have posed around uh, 47 questions. And the UGC put me on a committee <laughs> to review that. And I knew very well that uh, committee is uh, only applied to buy some time. And people also will forget. We will also forget. And we also forgot after the meeting was over. So this one-year LLM is a big disease. <clears throat> it's a big disease not because that uh, we are not capable of learning anything in that one year, but you compress the two-year curriculum into one year, 
reduce the credits for each and every course, but they have not diluted what you call it as uh, the dissertation part of it. And if you want to do a sincere, dedicated, committed dissertation, it will certainly take not less than six months' time. And simultaneously, you cannot do other courses, and you have to pass those courses, then submit your dissertation. I think it's very, very difficult. Of course, in Western universities, they are able to do it. That's a different story. Uh, don't think that everything is very nice when they go to Harvard, Yale, right, uh, Columbia, and come with a foreign degree, because they have a policy of not failing any LLM students. <laughs> right? So therefore, it is much more easier. So if you, because you spend money, $48,000, $50,000 per annum, go there with your travel, accommodation, expenditure, at least you should get a paper, isn't it? Certifying that you have done your LLM. And I think we have come to that level, <coughs> right? So the first one is uh, the mistake committed by the UGC in reducing the period to one year from two years. Logic may be anything. Not every logic is right, right? Because the basic, the ground, the undergraduate LLB degree or BA LLB degree, BSc in whatever nomenclature we call, they are not strong enough. And if they are not strong enough, any superstructure you build will be equally bad. And that's one comment. The second important uh, development that uh, poses a challenge to the young law teachers today is COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 developments. Whether you know technology or not, everyone is compelled to switch on their uh, mobile phone or at least the laptop and start lecturing. And as a lecturer, you know, you will not have any paper or anything. Now you are stand glued and uh, you have a coat or you have a shirt. You don't know what is you are wearing, right? <laughs> Down below. Sit and deliver the lecture. And sometimes if the teacher is advanced, in ICT, possibly you may record it and play it and go. <laughs> Even literally, physically, you may not be present. And I think so is the young students who are very, very religious in switching on, logging in. And the moment they log in, they log out of that uh, place. You don't know whether they are really present and listening to. And so it's a wonderful uh, you know, epitome that we have created of teaching learning process during COVID and post-COVID scenario. And now the students are coming with a different uh, plea, depression, right? If somebody is depressed, you cannot do anything because now the vice chancellor is answerable for any suicide <laughs> on campus, <laughs> right? So ICT has been misused in such a manner. It's very, very difficult. Uh, coming back to the first one, LLM, what do they do? The dissertation. Thanks to Google initially, or any other search engine. And today, thanks to ChatGPT. You can produce any number of uh, dissertations you want. And do the teachers have the time to review that, to go through, suggest, accept the signature they put? I'm very confident that many teachers don't even go through. I hope all of you have the same experience. But you don't speak, I speak. That is the only difference. So these two challenges will uh, hog you in the years to come, as long as you are going to be in legal education scenario, right? So therefore, these two were coupled with certain other ills of the universities. I will just make a mention about uh, two more, liberal evaluation by all the universities. I don't know why the competition commission was created, but there is a strict competition among all universities, private or public, to pass everyone, right? I go as on behalf of UGC, Bar Council, and NAG, 100% result. If it is 99%, it is bad on the university. So everyone is competing to promote them. And let me tell you, a PhD candidate is not able to understand the foundational principles of international law. He was not even able to distinguish between 
signature and ratification the difference between accession and nothing nothing he has got a phd has published a book everything but foundation is not there so liberal evaluation at all levels and that is also going to respond to the other question that the moderator might ask because uh, when you are serving in a private university you have compulsion from the management right don't fail anyone you give marks right if you don't give the mark i will give <laughs> right these are all adding to what you call it as the dilution of our own standards in the last uh, two decades at least right i am a product of the madras university i am proud of telling this in those days passing itself is a herculean task getting a second class you are blessed if you get a first class by any accident by the miscalculation by the university i think you are not in belonging to that state you are <laughs> somewhere in a different world altogether today nobody gets less than 55% in any paper why 55% is necessary for becoming a teacher let him survive at as a teacher at least right so the the approach is entirely different this has also contributed to the challenges right and then uh, net less spoken about that is better <laughs> all of you are qualified i was speaking to the previous chairman of the ugc and i was telling us oh, sir what does it stand for he told me vijay kumar you have been a vice chancellor you don't know what it is no sir essentially i want to know from you then he said it is national eligibility test i said that is for you sir as an implementer as a vice chancellor it is not eligible to teach <laughs> right do you think that by simply writing uh, the objective type questions answering them and clearing them right you become a good teacher i think that's a bad policy of ugc so i have identified two bad policies of ugc and they have all cumulatively contributed to what you call it as a present state of affairs in legal education in particular learning uh, on the job is a wonderful thing because i have learnt everything on the job because there were good role models as a student we had good teachers so we try to emulate when you become a teacher and you join them as a colleague you also emulate uh, some good features of a good teacher right still we are uh, you know able to appreciate how upendra bakshi or dr men in their own uh, you know premise can then you know you also learn something from them right but today do we have those role models right and i am afraid somebody is already nodding the head horizontally <laughs> right so it's very very difficult so the challenges are cumulatively increasing it's not decreasing right and then <clears throat> it's all right if you don't get good models but i think many of us suffer because we got bad models right easiest way you just come go to the class dictate notes right and who will listen to you professor rao was saying after 10 minutes they switch off they don't listen to you how to make them listen because the teacher has not progressed today the american psychologist association has uh, come out with a reading with a survey that uh, the attention span is anywhere between 20 to 25 minutes after that they don't, they can't and they have come out with a solution also gaming platforms right so if you don't equip yourselves with the technology and the progress in technology and integrate that with legal education you are not going to survive no student will tolerate you because they have full control over chat gpt annual fee is only 4000 or 5000 rupees so they can do better than many of the teachers right so if this is uh, the scenario as young teachers it is better to commit mistakes learn out of your mistakes and progress that will stand with you forever till your death if you are afraid of committing mistakes you will not learn anything in this background right and then teacher should not think that he is the lawgiver young teachers should not say 
and because you don't get the subject of your choice right property law oh the teacher has not come you teach property law or somebody teaching uh, intel specializing in llm intellectual property you go and teach family law he doesn't understand she doesn't understand abc of family law maybe they have studied in the undergraduate program right to teach you require some amount of command and interest both of them are required if both of them are not there if neither of them is present then i think it becomes uh, a huge mistake and therefore i would request the young teachers to be a facilitator a facilitator means you should encourage the teachers and he was also talking about the teachers training the fdp programs i go there i tell them two things which they don't like me if you don't teaching is not a job is not an employment it is a commitment it's a commitment whatever happens at home whatever happens elsewhere you are a teacher when you come to the class you forget all those things i stand up and salute uh, abdul kalam i also wish that i have an end like that right <laughs> while delivering the lecture you collapse and pass off you know i think that's what a beautiful scenario it is right so therefore please look at this teacher is a facilitator not a law giver we are not manus we cannot give laws we can read law and facilitate carry it to the students and allow them to participate if this participation does not take place the teaching becomes useless totally useless and that's why in the second uh, thing that i tell them is tell the students make the life of the teacher miserable within the classroom not outside miserable in the classroom by posing series of questions if the teacher thinks that the teacher knows everything nothing to learn from students i think the teacher is dead and gone a teacher can learn everything and many more things from the student body provided the student body is equally good and do we encourage that if somebody is asking the question sit down if you ask question uh, internal mark is with me <laughs> right i'll fail you i think this type of attitude we need to change and uh, i am an example standing before you in fact i delivered a lecture when uh, dr patil was there in kslu desai memorial lecture and in that i have acknowledged all my colleagues my co teachers in the subject matter and also the student body successively every year they made us to understand how much we don't know they made us feel that what we have understood is wrong and therefore we have to change our opinion and that type of attitude alone can bring lots of interest sometimes even if the bell goes the students will not go out of the class and if the teacher had to buy you know we have to go out of the class they will come to our room till 7 o'clock 8 o'clock in the evening they will never go because you don't satisfy them and that tug of war is very very essential for a conducive academic program and therefore it is very very difficult nowadays and uh, i have seen lot many young teachers roaming around with a pen drive right and any subject you say okay they change the pen drive go to the class right inside the pen drive start reading it decoding the experience if the power goes my point also goes that's not teaching that's no teaching in those days we used to have a position called as reader you may be fit enough for a reader not for a teacher right so therefore please look at all these things the students today have the capacity to cheat every one of you right every one of you please don't mistake me every one of you because chat gpt gives you the authority to cheat you i receive some projects i read i try to understand whether the student was present in the class at all right whether the student can speak such a beautiful english and somebody wrote an article i was jovially telling this one very very, very well written article on bonded labor and uh, it was approved for some conference at the fag end is uh, i called him and said did you write this he said yes are you married he said no sir i am not married do you have kids no sir i am not married how can i have kids but at the fag end of your article you have written thanks to my wife betty <laughs> 
and uh, <laughs> and two children's name they just fell uh, flat on my feet uh, sorry sir so you should be shrewd we never punished him we made him realize his mistake he is a good teacher now we made him realize his mistake and i think that is the role of a teacher right please keep this in mind and otherwise turn it in uh less spoken about is better or any other <laughs> you know uh, plagiarism software or uh, similarity index you give the article 95% plagiarist he takes that article or she takes the article makes few corrections here and there immediately it comes down to 50 again he takes back and uh, comes back less than 15% sir you have to admit right where are we going is he learning anything are you learning anything nothing at all so therefore the challenge before the teachers today is to create a an academic environment within the four walls of your classroom what is this academic environment i may take 3 hours to explain i am not going to <laughs> but i am only asking you to keep this in mind what is this academic environment you have to create it and that is the job of uh, the teacher right the teacher should not forget young or old that he or she is teaching a millennial the millennial kids because earlier all my notes which i studied uh, 40 years 50 years ago the papers have become a hellish right you read from that book and ask them to take down that that's all gone because you had the control over the information today every piece of information is available with you i'll tell you i go to the class and ask them to use the chat gpt google or any yahoo any search engine i have set of questions and ask them to check the answer they give the answer and i prove them in the classroom that the answer is wrong you do it four or five times the students will lose interest in having complete reliance on the information provided because if you know the computer language garbage in garbage out right if uh, they give garbage the garbage output also is the garbage right so therefore you have to understand this at millennial kids have the access to information but not the analytical skill not the problem solving maybe chat gpt will come with the second or third edition with problem solving also right you give the problem it may solve and give you the answer but till that point of time we should keep this the pattern of questioning the pattern of evaluation all these things need to undergo a great change and that is the role that we expect from you guys should there be a meaningful uh, training uh, program for fresh law teachers the answer is yes i learned research methodology in one of the training programs one month at anamala university way back in 1980 i have not forgotten anything right so therefore a meaningful person to person physical interaction no don't mistake me for something else right present in the four walls of the classroom wonderful we make even those experts feel bad for something that they have said and that is give and take and that way of training is necessary who can do it i'll just take one more minute to complete and then uh, uh, request my fellow panelist dr patil to say a few words <clears throat> who can take this my suggestion is because i can speak so many things but something which is not born it's very difficult so i would like to conclude with this suggestion that if the ugc can provide the list of not eligible to teach said list the net qualified list to a particular institution not run by the bar council of india i am 101% confident about it because they they are only undergraduates they cannot uh, teach how the teachers should teach or they cannot hire somebody to make them teach right so therefore they should give a list of these qualified people and those who have phd you advertise and recruit say around 60 potential teachers in a batch 
put them in one place with accommodation everything all internet everything available and that 6 months diploma course must be made mandatory for a law teacher in the years to come because at the end of the 6th month we expect those products to specialize in what they specialize at the llm or phd and then also use the science and technology ict teach it in interdisciplinary manner and uh, prepare question papers based on the problems and evaluate neatly by giving a model answer all these things will take some time so the 6 months who can do it better i told you any of the university can take this responsibility if it is possible or i have also suggested this uh, to the consortium of law schools i was the president of the consortium and i also mentioned to them that it is the role of the consortium to do this and it will have the credibility of transforming the young teachers to something qualified something meaningful something who can continue to evolve over a period of time thank you very much for uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to say few more words professor retired being associated with the general legal education a graduate of the traditional law college taught by the traditional teachers belonging to those batches before nls things came into existence and professor vijay kumar and rao sir they are all seniors to us maybe we belong to the same category all these people who are thinking about legal education are the products of those traditional law schools traditional law colleges schools were not there and we had excellent teachers probably they had not undergone orientation and refresher courses the expression used osmosis was working and probably people in charge of legal educational institutions allowed them to become teachers this young graduate will definitely become a good teacher but you should allow the system should allow him to become a good teacher and what is that we have done professor was very categorical x y z you have to have this 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 i came across it mrs navades because i am retired i read whatsapp things which come to me every day somebody is taking uh, his animal on a walk dog on walk and the other fellow came at why your dog is looking like a tiger no this is not dog this is tiger only but in the loved of apa score it has become like this promotion increment fdp certificate so fdp of 6 uh, 28 days 18 days more than a week i tell you allow that fellow he will perform he will prove there is a saying if you put any person in compliance mode creativity comes to an end and we have put all our teachers in compliance mode maybe there are exceptions when i speak like this always x y z should understand that it is not about his institution i am speaking of somebody else's institution because your institution is good institution llm sir told and i had jotted down the next point ease of doing phd he spoke of ease of doing llm once i had written a report of 18 pages thesis evaluation report of 18 pages and the guide is a very huge professor and i was a bit scared also i was a beginner in evaluation of phd thesis then once i landed in that place i asked a friend what was the response of the professor who oh, is so happy at the end of that there is somebody who reads the thesis before he writes the report <laughs> then i felt okay good uh, i'm so happy after that you retire <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the thing there uh, of the two hypotheses one is relating to law another is not relevant to law at all and uh, we had invited professor to our doctoral committee and he uh, <laughs> he 
guided all the PhD students to prune their problem, hypothesis, etc., etc. See, at the level of, I, I have sat in so many, uh, uh, what is this, interview committees of general legal education. Professors have sat in intro <laughs> in the specialized super legal education, elite institutions legal education, general uh, education, general legal education. We have no choice. We have no choice because these are our graduates who have come and stood before us. Who are you? I am a first rank. There is the matter. He is a 80% LLM. 84% LLM. <laughs> 80 is there. So these numbers we were hearing somewhere else, 90, 30, 60. And now they have come into this thing. And posts are more. Candidates are less. And we have to stand before the Bar Council of India. We have to show that we have minimum six teachers, ten teachers. Okay, ten I accommodate. And I will be looking out for a better one than this. Once that fellow comes, I will take him off and floating teachers. And some of them have genuine interest. And the way we have put them on task. And now, I tell you, sir, especially in Bangalore, and especially ladies, before they join an institution, they study that institution. Forget money. And on average, that money comes anywhere. How is the principal? How is the management? Whether they put you busy in stupid work. If that is the case, they will not join that institution. What I emphasize is academic autonomy. A teacher should have autonomy. I am a teacher. This is my class. I know what, see, the, all the language which I do not understand has come into play. POs, COs, AOs, BOs. I tell you, when we go on inspection, uh, how you say you have achieved this program outcome? On the basis of result. How you say you have achieved this course outcome? See, 80% results are 90. If 90% of the students have passed, and there is nothing to test the analytical ability of the uh, student in the question paper, there is not even one question on analytical ability, then how you say the course object is achieved? I tell you, sir, lock, stock and barrel, all of us are involved in self-defeating exercises, reaching the targets. Allow this fellow to be a teacher, and one, there is a question about dilemma. The dilemma of the young teacher is if the ambience in the classroom is not appropriate to teach because there are some mischief mongers there, his dilemma is whether he should bring it to the notice of his director, principal or management or not. If he brings it to the notice of the higher ups, they will take sides with the students because they have paid 3 lakh rupees, 2 lakh rupees and this fellow will be out. So I have to put on with all the inconvenience. And osmosis will not work, ma'am, in such an environment. I don't know what is osmosis, but I felt that this should be the situation. OK, uh, with that, uh, I pause for a moment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, professors, for your insightful and thoughtful answers. And also your very engaging answers. I can imagine that your students must have enjoyed uh, sitting in your classes. Uh, it's 3.15, and the session is supposed to end at 3.30. I had five more questions listed, which I had shared with all of you. So uh, I am now at um, what I'm going to do to make the best of the remaining 15 minutes uh, is to read two questions at a time. And you can pick and choose whatever you want to answer. It is like this. Yes. We know the questions. OK. So should I just read all of them? OK, I'll just read what questions I have, and uh, you can all answer them together. Uh, the second question was, uh, what, according to you, are the expectations from a young law graduate who joins academia? And I'm clubbing another question that is related to this. Uh, as a seasoned professional in the field of legal education, what are the most glaring mistakes you notice the new members of the fraternity make that you would like to advise them about? 
The other two questions were questions that came from me, actually. Uh, so uh, I'm a historian, also someone who teaches philosophy, who's now in an administrative role in RV University. And in this role, I often find myself reflecting on the landscape of higher education in India today. And the questions that I framed come from this reflection. So one of these questions is about the NEP. Uh, the NEP 2020 defines a certain vision for higher education in India, which includes objectives such as integration of Indian knowledge systems, multidisciplinarity, holistic education, inclusive education, and so on. How can law teachers incorporate these objectives in the classroom, especially given that our regulatory framework is laid down by the Bar Council of India? Uh, the other one that I was interested in is, historically, if you see, the purpose of education has been different in different time periods and different contexts, right? Uh, for the Greeks, it was to inculcate virtue, excellence of character in the student. At other times, it has been to produce good citizens. At other times, it has been to indoctrinate, like in the Soviet Union and some communist states. Today, it largely seems to be to produce employees for the job market. So what do you think the purpose of legal education is today, and how can law teachers make that purpose part of their classroom teaching? Uh, the next two questions are, how can teachers encourage active student participation and engagement in class, considering the complex and dry nature of legal topics, especially now with the ever-decreasing attention span of Gen Z? Not millennial, sir, it's Gen Z. Uh, question number six, what kind of ethical dilemmas can the teachers be confronted with and what should their response be? Uh, I believe some of these questions have already been addressed uh, in uh, what you said, but if you would like to add uh, and address the remaining questions, I'll invite you to do so. So, uh, shall we again begin? Uh, sure. Uh, I thought we'd begin in the same order with Professor Narsim Rao first. Thank you, Lakshmiji. After reading Professor Vijay Kumarji and Patil Ji, remaining is very less. So we can conclude, as per the schedule 3.30, we can conclude. Only provided if they talk very less. <laughs> OK, fine. One of the important questions is, what is the expectation of the young lawyers or young students? I soon as after 12th, one student enters into the system after seeing name of that particular brand name of that particular university. He feels that he's in a cloud nine and compares himself to be an advocate equivalent to highest paid in a Delhi Supreme Court. He will be expecting. First day, second day, first semester, 25% will come down. After fifth year is completed, when he is placing himself before the recruitment committee or recruiter, then he will be knowing what is the reality. He expects that whatever the fee he is paying should come in a month as a salary. If he is paying 10 lakhs as a fee, he expects 10 lakhs as a fee of his one month salary. Some people at the end, after attending too many recruitment process and failing there, at least one year salary should be equivalent to the amount that particular part. Means his quality should be equivalent to that. That is the expectation. Nothing wrong in that. Anybody can expect anything. Sky is the only limit. Then what is the expectation of the teacher when he is entering into the path? He wants to be a very good teacher. He will be putting his shoulders among, on the student's hand and also rub shoulders, go along with them, take them to hotels and give the chocolates with the expectation they will be giving the good feedback at the end of the semester so that he will be treated as one of the best because out of 10 he is getting 9.8, 9.9 is a, not a small, a small figure. So he wants himself to be there. That is one way of the teachers who are entering into the system for the first time. It will also go after a few years of his experience in the system. People will take chocolates, but they don't give the feedback as a 9.9. .9. If you are giving out of 199 good things to the students, if you are not obliging one point, if they ask which according to you is not correct, then your credibility will go. So don't expect the credibility in the system. What actually the people are expecting, what the legal education today is expecting is not a one-way teaching. It should be inclusive ed education. Or 360-degree learning process should go. Then only it will be com coming at. As a student, students should involve in the all activities of the, of the university. He should be a activist in a particular class. 
he should be part of the managing the programs he should be there as a mentor to, to uh, senior senior students uh, should be there for a mentor to the junior students like that all activities what are they are conducting they that particular students will be involving then he will be learning about the time management he will be mainly, uh, learning about the team management and also he, he will be learning about the social behavior and also he will be learning about uh, the worldly problems in a, uh, th when they are conducting the program if the students are not given opportunity only if you are giving the classroom teaching to them you are only killing their anxiety not only killing the anxiety they are you are doing injustice to the part of it so 360 degree learning should be given to the student as a teacher do you have the time to give this 360 degree learning to the teacher to the students no because all 48 or 60 classes your, your schedule is already fixed in the beginning only beginning of the semester this day this class this day this class your class design is over then you cannot deviate from that if you are deviating your complete your syllabus will not there if the students are not happy with at the end of the day they will come with a placard or a agitation that the teacher has not completed the syllabus as a result we are not able to write the mark yet give the grace marks like that it will coming up so for teachers it is very difficult for him to manage the time similarly students are very difficult they should be given take policy among the people unless student give is given conference or that particular part and teacher is not giving him the opportunity then this co collaborative activity if that, that is not there automatically the problem will come so it is very difficult to define what are the things how to go ahead with this part, part of it lot a good number of times the teacher will getting the ethical dilemmas whether to give as he said 100% mark or 90% marks pass him though he knows very well that this particular person is having a capacity to get 30 marks if you are giving 30 marks is failing management wants you to him to pass because this is, is, is giving at the end of the day when there is a recruitment failure he is not able to get a, a recruitment then again that's a, a dilemma so every time every every point the teacher will be getting the ethical dilemma he has to compromise nothing to do with this no, he cannot do anything because he in the system so when this is in the system unless drastic changes take place this inclusive learning takes place it is not going to happen another important point is you know we will be depending upon technology for many things chat gpt may ppt whatever it may be when you are taking a class in the classroom suppose there is a power power shutdown your ppt will not work and your mouth will not be stuck or why will you start stuck it are we confident to deal the subject in detail without ppt if you question yourself then the things can be more differently are we able to capture the information which is coming up from the day to day are we able to capture the information in the classroom not only teaching the textbook what are the cases that are being given in the supreme court of india or high courts nearby or across the american constitution what that is happening are we able to catch up if you are able to catch up that information integrate the learning information into the your day to day, -to -day operations part of it that you are going to get success teaching is not a big problem read this, what the uh, what is happening today put all the section inside read the sections read the case studies and come this is over that is not going to help at all we have to create anxiety enthusiasm analytical uh, important part of it o one way we have to create an anxiety among, among the people that i want to do this that then only the teaching level will be increasing and you are uh, what uh, teachers level will be increasing you will get a good name in the part of it this is what i am expecting part of it ethical dilemmas so many times to the teachers expectations are very heavy for the from the students the teacher when the giants in the system for the first time he wanted to turn around entire part but the rules but the management part of it the atmosphere of the, the university and many other will be handling him differently so he'll be shortcut there will be part of it so this is what my looking faster than what i did in the first session uh, for the second uh, question that was asked <coughs> I would like to put this uh, question uh, in perspective from my own experience in the last uh, 44 years, uh, 45 years now. Uh, <clears throat> what is expected uh, from the young law, law graduates joining the profession for the first time? Now they started putting NET also as a qualification. LLM, NET. NET is not a degree right it's an eligibility so 
when you look at it what i expect in a bullet form i am not going to explain these things because she has already warned me and therefore uh, my apologies if you need some sort of explanation i'll try to give it little later during the break the first and the foremost is willingness to learn from everyone be it your own colleague your own hod your own dean your uh, vice chancellor and finally the student body right no question asked in the classroom is a foolish question you cannot cut the student to say what the type of question you are asking sit down he will never ask the question in your class again right so willingness to learn commitment and sincerity second thing that we expect right i have seen teachers who can take attendance for 15 minutes or 20 minutes every day right and uh, i would request all of you to de emphasize on attendance concentrate on your subject matter which should attract uh, the students there were great teachers in our period we don't uh, used to attend our own regular classes because the teacher was bad right and uh, if i am not recorded on this point in the madras law college uh, you know we used to have 11 batches every batch used to have 110 to 120 students only one law college for the entire state so my roll number was 438 and all of them had uh, you know like uh, this one and huge doors windows bigger than the doors so when my number used to be called uh, yes will be heard from the classroom sir will be heard from outside the classroom <laughs> i used to jump out go and i uh, learned at a playing table tennis when i was a law student why is it happening because the teacher has not created the academic environment on the contrary another teacher teaching the same subject we request them those teachers to engage classes on saturdays and sundays you should see this scene where 120 students can sit 300 students will be sitting standing all over the place some of them will be standing near the windows and listen to the teachers why is the difference please ask that question you will refine yourselves so create this academic environment commitment and sincerity right read at least once when you, the moment you join whether it is relevant at all to you whether the university pays you seventh pay commission when the state government itself is not paying right seventh pay commission at all or not please look at one particular part of this ugc regulation of 2018 ethics of teachers whatever i want to say i think if you read it read it reread it as many times as possible much of your problems will be resolved because the teacher is expected to be multi dimensional in approach not necessarily to the students to the fellow teachers the administrative staff with the students your research publication i think everything has been done neatly and uh, one among the faculty development program i use this opportunity to tell them about uh, ethics i am not going to say anything more because i have given you the source please read that disparities between employment in statutory universities oh my god national law school teachers are getting this much of money oh the other private university they are getting more money right uh, in fact justice rama subramanyam who retired from the supreme court recently when i was the vice chancellor in chennai ambedkar law university all the three years both of us were invited together for celebrating teachers day in the first meeting he made a mention to the teachers right the government has done a disservice by enhancing the salaries of the teachers and the judges i was quite surprised coming from a judge right today we are looking at the salary and that commitment as a teacher is missing if you have the commitment you don't look at your salary what to get and that is the difference right please keep this in mind then uh, incorporating ict right from the beginning when you create a syllabus right the course outline 
please look around including the foreign universities not that you have to copy but you can go one step further one step beyond them and then create and that is what is expected when you look at the ICT and bring ICT as a tool to bring in the practical exposure to the study of law. I ask this question wherever I go, if you teach income tax law, at the fag end of the semester, if the student does not know how to fill a return, today it is online, you cannot go wrong. Figures may go wrong, but it cannot go wrong. Everything is available. Even this, the teachers are not able to inculcate, give it as a process of examination, not necessarily one end term examination. I'll, I'm going to give you a test tomorrow, how to fill an income tax return. Why don't you do it in the classroom? You don't have to print it, put everything on the online, you save it and then evaluate the students. Bring some literally practical exposure in each and every subject you can teach and that is what is expected of you and if you do that, the students will respect you, right? And look for interdisciplinarity in teaching, in law courses, both vertically and horizontally, right? And in the law school, National Law School, as the, I am also a founding member of the law school, we know what it means. We are interdisciplinary by nature. But what was thought as interdisciplinary, we have killed it uh, the, even before the child was born. First two years, non-law courses, I don't know, the stupid fellows, you know, I, I corrected them number of times. Don't use the term non-law course, social science course, integrated courses, non-law course, all the places non-law course, first two years, right? After that only your three-year law degree begins. They have not integrated the subjects. So as a teacher, if you are teaching family law, go and sit in sociology class, learn, and vice versa, sociology teacher to go and sit, right? Don't mistake that some teacher is sitting there, invigilating you, overseeing you. No. Take it, I think that is the best way to develop oneself. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, covering the syllabus is not the primary object of law teaching, but as somebody said, uncovering the syllabus. It is not the 10 units that you have to complete. Even if you complete one unit meaningfully and everyone understands what you said, I think you are a good teacher, right? That's the response to the second question. The third question uh, I do not want to respond to because uh, NEP itself excluded legal education. So we don't have to speak much about it. In fact, I had the privilege uh, of being a member of an implementation committee of the UGC on uh, regulation and governance. I asked the question to the then uh, acting chairman, what is the use of this? Unless and others you have a model bill, how do you think that we can speak about governance and regulation? No, 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 the minister wants it. <laughs> <coughs> That's it, their intention is something different. If it is excluded, have they excluded? The answer is no. <coughs> Sorry. There are a lot many things that we have to learn from, <clears throat> right? NEP has very good objectives, very good policies. This outcome and uh, income that Patil mentioned, right? These are all what you call it as the models. Whether we have the capabilities to understand these outcomes and other things, verticals, it's very difficult, right? So therefore, I will not speak much about it and uh, I had the privilege of addressing where the Joint Secretary Higher Education also, I was the chairman of a session, made a mention about, oh, NEP is a wonderful this, that, everything. Then I asked the question, Madam, it is more than three years. Have you introduced the bill? Right? If you have not even introduced the bill, how do you think that you can translate everything into action? Right? So I will not... Uh, uh, <clears throat> it has only created negatives, I will not get into it. Uh, fourth one, fourth question. Let me also take the lessons from NEP, creating good global citizenship, one thing. Second, to produce lawyers capable of practicing in more than two jurisdictions. In more than two jurisdictions. Please carefully look at this because 
today we are going global in everything it is not that you have to practice only in your own district or in one court you must be capable of going away and then doing it and that capability we need to create it third one to learn integrate and safeguard the artificial intelligence related implications in legal education as well it's going to be a huge task as long as ict is there the challenges posed by ai the threat also will be there <coughs> in my opinion <coughs> of law firms ten years down the line you can note down this is my understanding and my expectation corporate law firms will not survive <coughs> even if they survive they will not be number one what is going to be <coughs> is this cyber law cyber 4 and 6 cyber security information security privacy these are the law firms which will focus on these things because it will have global application not domestic therefore you have to train yourself and do this and finally wherever possible <coughs> <coughs> learn one foreign language at least right the fifth question <clears throat> i don't like the question the question has a value laden that law is a dry subject <coughs> law is not a dry subject the teacher may be dry and we shift the blame on the subject matter every subject is interesting in law it is our inability and incapacity to understand therefore i beg to differ from the moderator i didn't that <laughs> I given the right whoever has given this question so i don't appreciate that question so every subject is interesting unless and otherwise the teacher <coughs> goes to the first class sir Thank you to the class jurisprudence finished whatever little interest the student has will be killed in the first instance right there are number of methods through which one can teach so no subject is dry <coughs> but when you try to teach the subject with an interdisciplinary connect or a dose right if you are teaching uh, family law <coughs> or you are teaching uh, <coughs> criminal law bring certain concepts from sociology and ask the students to discuss or take the newspaper some important event and ask them do you appreciate this you are going to bring their attention to the law which you are teaching not the newspaper and don't cultivate uh, taking the newspaper every day to the class right these are all different models you have to identify and use it meaningfully practical dimensions to be incorporated with every law course that is possible i have already mentioned that i will not repeat it again incorporate ict tools in evaluation uh, wherever i go i use this uh, language gaming platform <clears throat> there is a, a gaming platform called as kahoot k a h w o t right you use it for 5 marks each or 10 marks each and uh, at proper intervals one week after you complete something objective based true or false or whatever it is the beauty of that system is no management can interfere no teacher can interfere because the answers are evaluated and the score is submitted to you online the moment the work is done you do it at least 3 or 4 times in a semester the students will be behind you i hope you understand what i'm trying to say right not the routine way of supervision understanding this that no 
integrate ICT to the extent possible. Then integrate uh, gaming platform that I already mentioned. The sixth question finally, ethical dilemmas. I am not going to explain this uh, because I am also looking at the clock. Uh, <clears throat> I will put it in a bullet form. The first and the foremost is management issues. And <laughs> if you give me the time, I may go for hours together. I will not speak about it with the management representatives present here. <laughs> Second one, salary and allowances, right? I don't know how many of you <coughs> will realize when I joined, uh, <coughs> sorry, my apologies. My first month salary was 832 rupees. But uh, when you look at it, it was a class one education service, status and recognition, wherever you went. I stopped going to movies because wherever you go, sir, sir, hello, sir, how are you, sir? <laughs> so you feel very bad that, you know, as if you have lots of time to go for movies, I stopped going to movies also. So, therefore, money is not the concern. Don't chase the money. Do your work. Your work will be recognized. Publish. Your article will be recognized. And you will be invited by different people. That is the only way for you to get along. Second one, third one is research and publication. Right? <clears throat> and uh, less spoken about this is better. Again, chat GPT issues will come. And finally, please do not boost results without substance. <clears throat> if the management, in, you know, in spite of it forces you, you say you have done your duty, it is for the board to decide. Let them do, do what? Because you are not going to sit and correct it. To do that confidently, right, and conf you know, comfortably, I would appreciate the teachers to present the key model answer to each and every paper that you set. So that you don't deviate. And if the paper is sent for re-evaluation, right, the question paper, the model answer, and the script, all the three will go together so that you'll be justified. Beyond this, if something happens, don't bother about it. Don't spoil your health by looking at the management. Right? You continue to do your work. Right? And finally, the last question, the seventh question, uh, as a seasoned professional, sorry, in the field of legal education, what are the most glaring mistakes you notice the new members of the fraternity make that you would like to advise them about? I'll just give an anecdote and then uh, uh, leave you at this point. Uh, just two years ago after uh, COVID, the teachers were not giving the answer scripts on time because it's a law university. Everyone had the freedom. <clears throat> so what I did was I imposed a condition, central evaluation. You will come to the room, we will provide you all the facilities, tea, coffee, lunch, whatever you want, you will sit and do it here. Sir, I will not correct more than 20 papers. It's all right. Correct 30 papers. Four days, the answer, everything will be complete. Four months, they have not submitted the results. Right? So, as a seasoned professional, what you are supposed to do? Please look around. That's why, you know, constant faculty meeting is also required. Uh, a third year result of five papers, I have collected them. And one teacher out of 120 students had given 48 students O plus. Only spelling is different. It must be O plus. <laughs> right? 80 and above. One teacher has given 48 students out of 120, 80 and above. Nothing less than that. Another teacher in the same class has given around 29. The te third teacher about 17, the fourth one was about 9, and the last teacher had given only 1. Now this is what you call it as glaring disparity. Either 
the teacher who had given only one student 80 plus is an idiot or the one who has given uh, 48 right please let me tell you out of my own experience those teachers who wanted to enjoy the limelight among the students by giving more marks after they leave the institution when they see the teacher they will turn the other way around and go but if you are a teacher to correct them not penalize them there is a world of difference between these two correct them right legal ethical whatever moral whatever it is even when they pass out right they will the moment they come to the institution they will not go to see the vice chancellor they will not go see the dean or the head of the department they would like to look for a particular teacher and go and say hello how are you that is a million dollar you get as a good teacher thank you very much i have a brief response by dr patel and then open up the floor for very very brief i have friends here who do not use ppts because it is not there in their institution chat gpt no we don't know we chat no gpt okay mentorship we had see we have fallen from the standards because we wanted to be modern when i was groomed i am a constitutional law llm i was assigned ipc in kle college bangalore i was teaching ipc i had gone back to my college my teacher professor ajapa what are you teaching sir indian people, how you are qualified to teach that then i had to give the list of books which i had read as a part of preparation to teach that subject okay you can try after reading all that in one of the books which i had the benefit of reading what best law teachers do has sparrow and one more author you should own the subject forget chat gpt forget a ppt forget xyz if i am a teacher i should own the subject and that requires a vast reading so somewhere there was a statement if you know only little you are in touch with little unknown when you expand the sphere of your knowledge when it is a huge sphere you touch so many things which you do not know right we are legal education elite institutions are there in their place catering to xyz who can hire their services we are there run of the mill legal education who make difference to this society and if you claim to be the leaders in legal education you take me with you because my products are there operating in the field they are making difference value premise madam this is a noble profession all professions are noble professions all professions are autonomous professions and recently at the verge of retirement i stumbled upon this expression law is an independent profession why law is an independent profession i went on learning and i want to tell this in one sentence if you are a knowledgeable person in law if you are a law graduate if you are an advocate if you are a lawyer you should be in a position to stand up to the power holder look into his eyes and say what is truth that is legal education that is legal profession and we have to prepare graduates who will lead if you are a leader in education there is a statement leaders will not produce followers leaders will produce leaders as a teacher i tell you there is a community siddhi community nearby dharwad there was not even a single liar in that community and i went to their village picked them up brought them to my college eight advocates are there in that community i said i feel fulfilled i have trained these people to take care of the interest of their community and neighborhood see we have to speak of the society we have to speak of this country india we have to speak up whoever from manupatra you are here sir please my appeal from kilpar we have started moot courts for government law colleges 
because government law college students cannot afford paying 2,000, 3,000 registration fees and participate in XYZ moot courts. We said we will conduct moot court for you. And yesterday, for the first time, we did it in Gulbarga. I had gone there with my students, whom I had trained in moot courts. And we are going to have it for all the five colleges in Karnataka. If you can consider, sir, to help these students with your gadgets, if you can give whatever Manopatra subscription to these five law colleges, I tell you, sir, it will be such a wonderful service that you will be rendering. And maybe it will be superior to any social responsibility that you will be discharging if you are going to equip these children from various villages who come and join the nearby uh, government colleges. And whoever who considers himself to be a leader in education, elite institution, please collaborate with others. National law school in the initial stages we love because they embraced all of us. They made us sit in various committees. We learned how national law school functions. What is that cooperative teaching? What, what various stages in PhD programs? We also improved, and they helped us. But now there is, unfortunately, what is the reason? I don't know. I do not want to look into that. There is a collaborate mentor, elate our fellows to provide good quality legal education. Having spent 35 years in this general legal education, I am well versed with all that, and I only hope and pray there is a wonderful statement in that book I referred. Uh, <clears throat> what good law teacher, what best law teachers do? All of us, teachers. I should become a teacher whom I wanted to have. That is the catch word. Thank you. Much. Uh, we are running out of time. Uh, is it okay if I just ask people to ask questions and they can address them later? Okay, if you want to ask a question, you may pose it now, but we will not have time for the answers. You can discuss the answers over tea. So if there's anyone who wants to pose a question, please, yes. Could you please pass the mic? Whereas it is available in the rest of the professional call, like medicine, you have the continuous professional education. Chartered accountancy, you have the continuous program. But where is the continuous professional education in law? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll take answers later. Yeah. There's a tea break now. Whether PhD makes a person a good teacher, because that is being made mandatory by Javedkar for universities. According to me, teachers need not have PhD, PhDs need not be a good teacher. What do you agree, sir? As panels today, thank you, Manupatra, for this, and RV College as well. And as far as uh, Dr. Vijay Kumar, sir, is concerned, he's my mentor. He introduced me to law school then in 95. And I can see... I mean, whatever he's talking, he used to tell us and the students. I mean, I was not a student. I was a young teacher then. And it has evolved. And today, when, we are, when I see the universities, when what is the problem when uh, Dr. Patil was telling, most of the universities are running behind numbers. Mm -hmm. And there is a big divide. There is a big divide between the public university. We all are products from public universities, all of us, including them. Then coming the onset of the... Uh, uh, national law schools, and then coming uh, the affiliated colleges, then uh, private state universities, and then deemed to be universities. So now I was talking to one of the deans around here, a young dean. He was telling me, oh, it's just numbers. We're forced to do numbers. And in this number game, when they in invite a teacher for recruitment, they don't ask what you know or what you can teach. They're asking, what is the business model for revenue building? Mm -hmm. And this is the problem. And then when you get into the college, this is one area, even if you don't want to, you have to do it. And the younger teachers are, oh, I finished my net set, so what is my going to be my increment? Oh, I finished my LLM. I did my one years in foreign university. And today, okay, you're to doing your traditional, there's nothing called traditional law colleges. You are doing the law is country specific. And again, you do law from outside and you come here. And then they say, okay, you are done from here, so we will give you this much. This is your package. You have done from this. This is your package. And you have done from the... <laughs> I'm sorry. So <laughs> this is your package. We never asked for salaries when we went to teach. We thought it's a commitment, it's a vocation. And for us, we felt committed to every student. But today it's not that. My time is up, the clock ticks, I leave. Or if I take a lecture, I get 5,000, 3,000. But you know, we used to get 30 rupees when we began our careers in, say, in 91 and all. 
per lecture. And today, it's not the same. And what is taught is just repeat of whatever, uh, we never had databases then. I remember we were the first ones to take Manupatra in those days, I mean, in, in Mumbai. But today, what is happening is you have all the material available. And this material is repeatedly repeated, and it's going on a cycle. So there is no creativity. So it's the same product coming out. And the teacher, again, uh, is coming. He gets a teacher such. The next, I always wonder, what about my child? Who is going to be his teacher or her teacher? So this is what I thank the panel today for really explaining to, those, to this all of us. And I think we need to have a paradigm shift, a revolution in legal education. Thank you very much.